Hello and welcome to my channel. It's voiceover duty here. Today I've just got a few things that I need to work on in the studio. So rather than trying to do anything with instruction, I just thought you might like to come along for the ride. So the first thing I do is come in, bring in my coffee and unpack. So I went shopping the day before I was filming and there were a few bits and pieces that I picked up for doing stuff with. So I've brought those back from Ikea and other places and I need to put them away so that I've got space to work in. And then I need to account for the things that I've bought. I'm making some wash bags for a friend and I just need to keep a track of how much I'm spending so that we can go through it. So I've gone back onto Spotlight's website to see how much I paid for all of the bits that I bought from there. And I have cut this because it took me a little bit of time. And then I bought this new ring light lamp from Ikea. My current ring light, which you're currently attached to, is a bit shaky. So I thought this might be good for doing face to the camera type of stuff. And the shaky ring light can be done with you know, where I need more ambient lighting. But, you know, with most Ikea things, there's this whole convolution of things checking. Do I have all the right parts? Do these parts all fit together? How do they fit together? So, again, I have saved you a little bit of time and agony. And I have edited this down so that the 25 minutes or so that it took for me to put this lamp together is re reduced down to maybe a minute or so. <laughs> Now this lamp in the US retails for 30 US dollars. Here it retails for 60 Australian dollars. So at this point I'm feeling just a little bit um, peeved, shall we say? But it's a good lamp. It's got a really solid base. It's still easy to move around the studio so I can clear it off the desk if I don't need to be using it right now. It's got some great different levels of lighting and colour lighting, so I'm all good with that. So now we're moving on to the first actual job of the day, and this is for the a business that shares the workspace with my sister at her location, and uh, they're called bookbuster.com.au, and uh, I was asked if I would put her web address across the rear bumper of her car and across the top of her windscreen. So this is me making sure I took the measurements uh, previously and I took them in inches. So I've just converted the software to working in inches instead of centimetres and I'm sizing everything according to the, the measurements that I took. So now that I've worked out that they're the right length and the right height, I'm now setting it up to send it to the scan and cut. And I did reverse it and then realised actually I didn't need to reverse it. So I've cut that bit out, but I did change it back before I then cut it. So here we are. I've created it in shortcuts a lot, which I prefer to work in, but you then have to move it to brother scan and cut in order to send it to the machine. So here we are now at the machine and uh, I would advise you every time you do a cut make sure you do a test cut. So what we're going to see here is first of all me cutting out the length of vinyl that I'm going to be using but then once I get it to the machine I do a test cut and I advise you every single time you cut, even if it's the same vinyl that you're cutting twice in a row, always do a test cut before you do your final cut. 
I'm often amazed at how it differs from one thing to the next. I cannot set up like two or three cuts in a row with all using identical vinyl and have them cut identically. For some reason, it never does. The other thing I advise you to do is always put your dust covers back on your mats. So here we go. The vinyl goes onto the mat. And I'm using Oracle uh, 551 here, which is rated for having a 10-year outdoor life. So it should last on her car reasonably. Now, this being Perth, and we get some fairly weird weather and lots of heat, um, I have told her that it's not guaranteed to last 10 years, but it should last a fair amount of time. If it lasts three or four years, I think she'll probably be happy with it. So here I am, I'm doing test cuts. And I've sped this all through because watching me do test cuts is dull as dishwater. But I really, really must emphasize how much, how important it is to do a test cut. So here we go, we're now actually cutting through. And because again, you don't wanna watch a scan and cut, do all of the cutting, I've edited this down as well as speeding it up. Off to the mat, cut off the excess, and I've worked out that that strip was going to be enough for me to do one more of the lines. So I went back to the computer and I edited it down so that I only had what I was looking for. And see, this is where I made my mistake. I assumed that because I had used this vinyl already and cut it and it had cut successfully, that this cut was going to work fine. And it didn't. It cut too deep. I don't know what happened. The blade didn't move. Uh, I didn't change any of the pressure settings or anything. But I didn't do a test cut and I set it straight to cut. I did scan the vinyl into the machine so that I could make sure that the placement of the words was accurate. So forgive the shot of the back of my head, but that's me making sure that the letters are actually going to cut on the vinyl, but I didn't do a test cut. And this is where my mistake was because this cut all the way through the vinyl into the backing paper. And I ended up with something that was very difficult to handle and very difficult to weed. And I tried to rescue it and the camera cut off. So I took out that section that it only partially filmed of me trying to weed the, the badly cut. But see this next shot, I've weeded it and I've got my transfer tape out and I've stuck it back down to the mat so that it would sit flat. I've then cut my transfer tape. Now, normally I don't cut the transfer tape and put it on until I'm just about to install it because otherwise the transfer tape glue has a tendency to set a little. I find on this particular transfer tape, a great transfer tape, but it does have a tendency to set. It stops being repositionable after a while. But this was only going to be a matter of this, I think it was 24 hours that it was going to be, so it wasn't going to be a problem. But see, trying to get those letters to lie flat so that I could put the transfer tape was a pain. And then I lay the transfer tape down. And again, because it wasn't sitting entirely flat, I had to keep lifting the transfer tape up and putting it back down again. So don't do what I do. Always do a test cut. It will save you time in the long run. This added a huge amount of hassle to my day. But hey, I make it work. Okay, so this is the final strip going to do the last of the second website address. And I did do a test cut on this one. And I'm glad I did because it worked out perfectly. Oh, 
got so paranoid that it hadn't worked that I stopped it halfway through to check. But it had worked and had done what I wanted it to do. So now I can just weed those last three strips. And I usually start by taking out the centres of all the letters first. And then weeding the outside. And I always weed in reverse from the way the letters are written so that things like C's and E's rip their centres out first. So all weeded to go, ready to go. Right, so now the project number two. Uh, this is a design that my idea that my daughter came up for with for Christmas last year for some of her teachers. And um, my uncle asked if I would make it for a friend of his. So I just was checking to make sure that the design was right on the computer. Here I am trying to decide what vinyl to use. So the original one was a, a white ring and then blue EA and then teacher in black. But I don't have any black left. So I was looking around my stash to see what I have. I try not to have too much vinyl in stock. Um, my studio is quite small and I don't want to have a huge amount of money wrapped up in keeping lots of vinyl. So I only buy what I am going to use for particular things. So here we go, mat back out again. And this is heat transfer vinyl, which is significantly thinner than the standard vinyl. So again, I do a test cut on this, on both of them because they are different. And I have cut out where I've done the test cuts because otherwise this would be probably another seven or eight minutes longer than it currently is. Doing the test cut takes time, but it saves you vinyl every single time. I have the, my scan and cut is the CM950, which means that it has a manual blade, manual depth blade. Uh, ironically, I bought the CM950 and about three months after I bought it, the DX versions came out with the automatic blade and I was kicking myself but it's a nice machine and I absolutely love it and I, I see no justification in upgrading it just at the moment so there we go we've got the circle cut out and now we're going to do the EA teacher And I scan the vinyl on the mat so that I can see where the vinyl is. And then I move the design so that I'm using up as least amount of vinyl as I can possibly manage. And the off cut will be kept for another piece. That is one of the things that I really like about the scan and cut is the fact that I can actually scan the vinyl that I'm about to use and see how much I've got. So here we go. Right. So the heat press now needs to come out. And I preheat it, if I'm doing HTV, I preheat it to 160 degrees and I set it for 15 seconds. So this is a cushion cover from Ikea. And I'm going to press it 
for two reasons. One of it, I need to press it to pre-warm it and get any moisture that's in it out. But also to get some of those big folds out so that it's easier to work out where I'm going to place the vinyl. Doing a quarter at a time. I'm taking care to make sure the zip is not anywhere near the machine because the zip's plastic. Okay, so now I need to find the center. So I fold the edges together and just do a quick press. Fold it the other way. Do another quick press. And then that way I've got a press mark where the cross, where the center is. So leave that to keep warm until I'm ready to use it. So I set the circle down first because that's the one that's easiest to find the center. I've folded the vinyl in half both ways so that I can just line up the crease marks on the vinyl with the crease marks on the cushion. And then I do a couple of presses, short presses. This is why I only do 15 seconds at a time. Just do a couple of presses to tack it into place and then really make sure it's stuck down. and it comes off reasonably well. It was a little off cut that got caught on it, so I used the vinyl pick tool to pull it off, and then it's to line up the center, and this is all completely eyeballed. I this, do this according entirely to sight. Make sure that it lines up in the center and looks good. Again, hundred. this is the Styles uh, Sparkle Vinyl and it takes 15 seconds to set. And then once I've got it all ready, I take off the transfer tape and I just make sure what I'm checking here is to see if I can see the texture of the cloth through the vinyl. That tells me that I've got a really good adherence and I'm just double checking. And what I've learned is short bursts of heat to make sure that it's working i'm happy with that and that's it for the day so now it's tidy up time heat press gets switched off vinyl gets put away heat press goes back into the cupboard And all my tools returned to the shelf. And then I just need to pack a bag and make sure that I've got all the bits and pieces that I need to take these vinyl to the person's car. So I've got some cleaning fluid some co-cleaner, uh, I'm refilling the isopropyl alcohol and then I've got a thing that's got wa mostly water and just a couple of drops of soap in it. So what I'll do is I will spray the back of her car down with a co-cleaner and that will get the majority of the dirt off. The isopropyl alcohol will then go next and make sure that there's no grease and then um, if I need to I can use the soap and water to make it slippy. So now this is the cushion cover for my uncle. I put the Ikea tag back in it. And finally, just tuck away the last few bits and pieces. This is the vinyl from the center of the circle. Seems a waste to waste that, so. Those are my scraps. And that's it, we're done. 
Hi, I just wanted to pop on and apologise for this video not having come out last week. Last week was a little crazy. I had a, a service that I was singing in a choir in and then I went and visited my aunt and that was lovely. And then I had some various other bits and pieces that I needed to do for other people that I couldn't video. So I've just been a little bit pushed for time this week and I'm hoping that I should be back on schedule. I don't want to just create content for the sake of creating content in order to get a video out each week so I'm I will continue to try and schedule them to happen to be released on a Monday morning but if that doesn't happen then it might be the following week I'm doing as best as I can and if you have any ideas of what you would like to see from me uh, in terms of videos then please put them in the comments down below and I would love to get on them and if you would like to buy me a coffee then I've put the link for that down in the description block below which would really help me out and help my channel out please don't forget to like the video and subscribe because that puts the video out to other people who have similar tastes to yours and we will slowly build up a community of people who are kind of looking for the same sort of thing so thank you so much for spending the time with me i hope you really enjoyed the video and i look forward to seeing you again in the future bye